Hello folks, welcome to this episode of Rich Insights. I'm Don Rich, Head of Investments for Esoterica Capital. Today's topic is on the dollar. Oh boy, we got a good one for you today folks. We have a good one. You want to keep an eye on the dollar right now, particularly the Euro dollar, right? And the Euro crosses, the other Euro, uh, the other crosses with the Euro, right? And the reason for that is because the ecosystem is experiencing a shift. Now we started to talk about this about a month ago. So this is really just an update. But if you wind or if you go back and look at the videotapes, you, you'll see we were talking about this recovery fund and how important that was to Europe. The recovery fund. The idea that Europe wasn't just going to shift money any longer from one account to another and call it a stimulus plan. Right? That's just robbing Peter to pay Paul. That really a whole lot of hand waving, but but not a whole lot of substance. All that changed in. All that has changed here, and it was started with the recovery fund. All right, and since then, of course, we see spending limits. Right, the, particularly Germany was so adamant about the the uh, debt limits and the spending limits and so forth. All this seems to be going by the wayside. Again, I'm exaggerating a bit, but that is the trend right now. We are going to looser policy for the first time in Europe in a meaningful, in a meaningful way. All right. And so that has a lot of people excited. All right. So I want to give you an update from where we were a month ago when we first talked about this and talk about what it means today, how we can take advantage of it yet today. All right. So let's go to the charts here. All right. So what we have here is, is the Euro uh, US dollar exchange rate. All right. So the way to read this is that one euro costs a dollar twelve, a buck twelve. All right. So you can see here, the euro has went from one oh eight, right, a buck oh eight to, you know, a dollar twelve, and we've been floating sort of sideways here. Right? A lot of people got excited when they first made the announcement, right? That was this four percent move or so from one oh eight to one twelve, but we've been sort of trading sideways here, largely sideways for much of the last month. So the question is, again, where do we go from here? It's only moved 4% here. And if this is as, as, as meaningful as I think it is, then this could be the start of, of some serious dollar weakness. Again, you have to keep in mind that if we have another dislocation, of course, the dollar is going to be the safe haven currency. But if we don't have a dislocation, then the fundamentals start taking over again. And this structural shift in mindset, particularly in Germany, is meaningful. It is something that we need to think about. Now, the good news is, as I said, the euro has only moved about 4% against the dollar so far, from 108 to call it 112. Right. That's the good news. Now, what about the bad news? The fat man isn't the only one that's picked up on this. All right, take a look at this, boys and girls. This is Euro dollar positioning and look how long the market is positioned to be long dollars. Not the, not the longest uh, positioning ever. There's one other time in history, right? But the second highest level in history. All right. What do we do with that? The market is already set up for Euro strength. Dollar weakness, euro strength. The market is set up for it. When we talked about it a month ago, if you got on that bandwagon, right, you're in you're in that data set probably, right. But if you haven't picked up on it by now, we're really in chase the ambulance mode, right? There's so many people that already have this long euro position on. Now we're to the point that we risk these traders getting squeezed out, getting forced out of their long euro positions, right? You don't, you probably don't want to be with that group, right? We're just too late to the party. A month ago when we talked about it, yeah, all right, but not any, not any long. All right, so I mentioned, you know, what are your, what are your uh, alternatives? Well, one is sort of chase the ambulance, as I, I describe it. Keep your eye on uh, the euro, and when it starts moving, just jump on the bandwagon with everyone else. Now, in the meantime, if the positioning gets squeezed, all right, you, you could use that to your advantage. The other way to think about this, though, is from an equity position. Even though positioning is very long euros, I don't think that's true in equity space, right? If a U.S. investor takes 
an EFI position or just takes a, a, a MSCI Europe position, your long euros and your long equity. All right, that's something to think about because Europe has certainly lagged the U.S. Uh, equities uh, in terms of performance. So maybe there's some catch up to do. And if you get some currency push with that, well, as a U.S. investor, that might look pretty handsome. Let's go back and take a look at this chart here one more time. Notice th this actually was uh, February 20th or, or February 25th, one of the two. I don't recall the exact date now. But since the start of the coronavirus, look at this position. People have uh, canceled their, their euro shorts, right? We started the year in, in 2019, the marketplace was consistently short euros, all right? And then going into the coronavirus, the euro shorts got large. But since then, they've continu uh, continually been covering their shorts, and now they're net long. And again, net long to the second highest level that we've seen in the last 20 years. All right, now if we think about that then compared to positioning again we were short euros short euros while the dollar was appreciated or euro was depreciating so to start the year positioning was correct and then of course since then there really hasn't been much except for frustration and losses until we've had this most recent move up that has given has generated some profit for those that have, have been positioned for it now when i look at something like this i don't only want to be concerned with euro positioning because we're, we're looking at a structural shift or well certainly a structural shift at least in mindset as far as the europeans are concerned and may, maybe even you know a, a broader interpretation of a structural sense here so most of the focus is on the euro but i want to have some tailwind if I was going to pursue a position like this, I'd want to have some tailwind. I wouldn't want everybody just to be focused in the euro. So what I want to look at next are going to be all dollar longs or short. We know people are short the dollar long euro, but what about across the other currencies? All right, so that's what we're looking at in this chart. Total dollar longs, again, across all the future contract currency pairs, not just the euro. Now, what do we see on this chart here? The dollar longs are in negative territory, right? So, so net, uh, we're net short dollars, not just in euros, but in others as well. We're net short dollars, and we're just getting to the point where about uh, the the shortest we've been all year. All right, so we we do have some tailwind here. We do have some tailwind uh, to this trade, or another way to say it is again, people are buying other currencies other than just the euro. They are shorting the dollar. Uh, and, and buying euros and buying some of these other currencies as well. All right. So again, that's the trade. That's the trade. That's what you want to keep your eye on. You want to focus. The market expects dollar weakness, particularly euro strength due to the shift in mindset. If you start seeing that again, from a currency's perspective, you could jump on the bandwagon. It's probably too late not to play the ambulance game now. It's too late. The, the, the positioning is too extreme at this point, I would say. But the other thing I want you to think about, though, think about this. Now, if you're a U.S. investor and you're comfortable going abroad, we're still staying in developed market space. We're just leaving the U.S. You might want to think about a, a European equity position. And then if you get the currency push of, of uh, some dollar weakness, along uh, with perhaps some outperformance, since Europe's been lagging the U.S. in terms of equities, Wow, that, that, that's something to consider, right? That's something to consider. If that story pans out, um, that, that would be very nice. But anyway, I wanted to point that out. What we're doing is largely just, just an update from a, a month ago to see where things are at uh, today. I still think it's an interesting trade idea like I did a, a, a month ago. You just have to think about it differently today. All right, so that's our message for today. I'm Don Rich, and you've just experienced a rich insight. I hope you've enjoyed it. May your beer be colder than the company you keep. We'll talk again.